Motion is the most basic concept in physics, but still the most general one. We could study about the motion of a football and also about the motion of a galaxy. It turns out that the physical quantities of concern in both the cases are the same. So, if you understand motion of a football, then to some extent you can talk about the motion of a galaxy. The study of motion is divided into two parts, kinematics and dynamics. Kinematics describes the position and the motion of objects as a function of time, but does not consider the causes of motion. The study of causes of motion is called dynamics. We start with kinematics by considering motion in one dimension. So let us begin. When we talk about the position of an object, it is relative to some reference point called origin. The positive direction of the axis is the direction of increasing numbers while the opposite of that is the negative direction. So if a particle is at x equals to 3 meters implies that it is 3 meters in the positive direction and if the particle is at x equals to minus 3 meters implies that it is 3 meters in the negative direction from the origin. A change from position x1 to position x2 is called a displacement given by delta x and delta x equals x2 minus x1 which implies final position minus the initial position. To give an example, if particle is moving from 3 meters to 5 meters, then delta x equals 5 minus 3 equals 2 meters. Therefore, positive delta x implies motion in the positive direction. If particle is moving from 3 meters to 1 meter, then delta x equals 1 minus 3 equals to minus 2 meters. Therefore, Negative delta x implies motion in negative direction. We can see that displacement delta x gives us information not only about the magnitude of displacement but also about the direction in which the particle is displaced. Therefore, displacement is a vector quantity. We can ask a question how fast a particle is moving. There are several quantities defined to answer this question. One such is average velocity. It is the ratio of displacement and the time taken in which this displacement has taken place. So V average equals delta x by delta t. In the graph of x versus t, V average is the slope of straight line passing from t1, x1 and t2, x2. Just like displacement, V average is also a vector quantity. V average has same sign as delta x as delta t is always positive. For example, if a particle has moved from x equals to 1 meters to x equals to 4 meters for t1 equals to 1 and t2 equals to 5 seconds, then V average equals 4 minus 2 divided by 5 minus 1 which equals to 0.5 meters per second. Average speed is a different way to describe how fast object has moved. Average speed is defined as total distance traveled divided by the time taken to travel that distance. Now since the total distance is a scalar as it doesn't talk about the direction of motion as average is also a scalar. Instantaneous velocity or just velocity refers to how fast a particle is moving at a given instant of time. This is achieved by shrinking the time interval to zero and it is represented as v equals to limit of delta t tending to zero into delta x by delta t which is equal to dx by dt. Now just as v average instantaneous velocity is also a vector. In a graph of x versus t, instantaneous velocity at time t0 is the slope of a tangent to the curve at t equals to t0. When the velocity of the particle changes, it is said to undergo acceleration. So just like average velocity and instantaneous velocity, we have average acceleration and instantaneous acceleration. So A average equals delta V by delta T 
and instantaneous acceleration is given by a equals to dv by dt. So acceleration of a particle at any instant is the rate at which its velocity is changing at that instant. And so in the graph of velocity versus time, acceleration at time t0 is the slope of the tangent to the curve at point t equals to t0. Now since a is given by dv by dt and v is equal to dx by dt, so we can combine them together and write a equals to d2x by dt. So acceleration at any instant is the second derivative of position with respect to time. Let's consider a special case when the acceleration of the particle is constant. We want to derive the equations that gives us the variation of velocity with time and also the variation of position with time. So let's start with a equals to dv by dt. This implies that dv equals a into dt. Now integrating both the sides we get integral dv equals to integral of a into dt. Now since a is a constant we can take it out of the integral and we get v is equal to a integral dt which equals a t plus a constant. This constant is determined by initial condition. So let's say at time t equals to t0 v was equal to u. This implies this constant c is given by u. So the final solution is v is equal to u plus a t. This equation gives us the variation of velocity with time. We can go on to derive the equation for the variation of position with time. Since v is equal to dx by dt and from our previous equation we get v equals to u plus a t. This implies that dx by dt equals to u plus a t. Now integrating both the sides we get integral dx equals to integral of u dt plus integral of a t into dt. Now integrating we get x of t equals to u t plus half a t square plus a constant. Again the c is determined by initial condition. So let's say at t equals to t0 x equals to x0. This gives us the final equation as x of t equals x0 plus u t plus half a t square. Another equation we can derive is the variation of velocity with position. For that we use the chain rule of derivative and express the velocity as a variation in position that is variation in x. So v is equal to v of x. So we write a equals to dv by dt and now using chain rule we can write this thing as dx by dt into dv by dx which equals to v into dv by dx. Now integrating both the sides we get integral of v into dv equals to integral of a into dx which equals v square by 2 equals to ax plus c. If we put the initial condition that at x equals to 0 v was equal to u. This gives us the constant as u square by 2 and we get the final equation as v square is equal to u square plus 2ax. Thus these three equations x is equal to x0 plus ut plus half at square v is equal to u plus a t and v square is equal to u square plus 2 a x are enough to determine the motion of a particle moving with constant acceleration in one dimension. Remember that these equations are valid only when the acceleration of the particle is constant. If the acceleration is a function of time then we have to integrate it to get v of t and x of t.